Hello all. Welcome to the session of UX Design Lifecycle. This concept is taken from the UX book by Rex Hudson and Partha Paila. Before starting with UX Design Lifecycle, let us know difference between user interface and user experience. User experience is the interaction and experience users have with the company's products and services. To gain UX insights, this might include conducting research to learn about the positive and negative points of an experience and taking those learnings to make improvement that positively impact a user's experience. Think about ordering food online for a pickup delivery. The UX consists of the user's interaction with placing their order on a company's website their in-store experience of picking up their order and also their satisfaction with their food. User interface is the specific asset users interact with. For example, UI can deal with traditional concepts like visual design elements such as colors and typography. It can also look at the functionality of screens and more unconventional systems like those that are voice based. To continue with the online food order example, UI would focus on visual designs of the screens a user interacts with such as colors to make the order button and where to place it on the page. This can also include user interfaces a user might come in contact with in store. So user experience encompasses all the experiences a person has with a product or service where a UI is specific to the means by which people interact with a product or service. So when I say user experience, it should be usable, it should be desirable, it should be valuable, it should be findable, it should be usable, it should be accessible. So when I say UX, UX is focused on user's journey to solve a problem, whereas UI is focused on how a product's surface look and function. Now before starting with the UX life cycle, there are two different, there are some points which we need to keep in mind. First, when I say about a process. When we deal with UX design, it is very important to understand what is a process and to make a process. So process is a guiding structure that will help the novice and the experts who are dealing with the project to handle the project nicely. Now this process helps the novice in a way that it ensures a novice person to know and follow every step as required. However, when I say process in terms of an expert, in expert it helps the person to know and to track the quality of the product and to make sure that the project is on path. Now process for an expert acts as a checklist so that the person does not miss any important aspects of the problem in the product. Now when I say life cycle, life cycle is a structured framework which has different stages and it has its corresponding activities. So different stages are analysis, design, implementation which is also called as prototyping and then evaluation. Now when I say a process, a process can be an iterative process. That means if we do not uh, finish the process completely or if we need to explore more in a given stage or phase, a process can be uh, repeated and iterated. So there is a characteristic of HCI which says wash, rinse and repeat which is followed even in the UX life cycle. The UX life cycle consists of four different phases. First is analyze, second design, third implement and fourth evaluate. In our life cycle concept specific to a UX process 
Analysis translates to understanding user work and needs. Design translates to creating conceptual design and determining interaction behavior and look and feel. Implementation translates to prototyping and evaluation translates to way to see if our design is on track to meet users needs and requirements. In a large system view, implementation includes a final production of hardware and software including the user interface. However, in our UX lifecycle template, implementation is limited to interaction design component and prototyping is the design manifestation we use for evaluation before it is finalized for production. So as I have told that UX lifecycle is an iterative process. From one phase of the life cycle, we can go to the next phase, we can iterate in the same phase and we can move back to the previous phase if it is required. Let us come to the first phase of the UX life cycle that is analyze phase. Now analyze phase represents the all the analysis process activity. In that first activity is contextual inquiry. In contextual inquiry, inquiry, we basically deal with knowing the user, interviewing the user and getting more insights about how the user performs that task, which includes some of the artifacts which the user also uses. Contextual inquiry will give us a raw data about observing people as well as interviewing people and get information about how are they using the existing system or how do they work in the given current context. Once contextual inquiry is done, we move on to the next uh, sub-activity of analysis phase that is contextual analysis. In contextual analysis, we define the work roles in the, for the current system. We define the initial flow model. We make a proper requirement where we try to find out different kinds of requirement from the answers users have given and then make the activity note. Once the activity note is made, we finally try to synthesize the activity note. So when I say synthesizing the activity note, I will make sure that every statement is clear and understandable. And last process in contextual analysis is to create a word diagram where I create a hierarchical diagram to make sure that every activity note which is created is placed into proper groupings and into a hierarchical form. The third phase in analysis is extracting the requirements. Now when I say extracting requirements, it will try to get the functional requirements as well as system requirements from the statements made by the client or the user. Now extracting requirement is done by a team of people who will go through the word process, understand the whole uh, process about what user has answered, what the, the statement user has made and then finally make up the requirement. Once the requirement is done, we need to make design informing models. Now design informing models are basically which you can compare it with UML diagrams where you have different kinds of models created to make sure that Whatever user is trying to say, every scenario is being represented in the terms of a diagram. So different kinds of design informing models are user model, usage model, work environment model. So when I say about user model, I have my social model, then I have flow model, I have physical model, I have my interaction model. So all these kinds of models are made so that all kinds of barriers or any kind of difficulties which can come up in the system can be identified. So here in the diagram as you can see in analyze phase we have contextual inquiry, contextual analysis, user needs and requirements and design informing model. The second phase of life cycle is the design phase. In the design phase, among all the, all the possible sub-activities to support design are design ideation and sketching. 
where the team does creative design thinking, brainstorming and sketching of new design ideas. Design ideation leads to the representation of mental model, conceptual model and design storyboards. During the exploration of large number of design candidates, it includes physical mockups of product design ideas. Design production is a design subactivity involving the details of applying requirements, design informing models and envisioned design informing models to drive and inform the emerging interaction designs. Design production entails prototyping and iteration of the conceptual design, intermediate design and detailed design. So when I say about design phase, in design phase basically we have brainstorming where we try to explore a lot of designs, we try to make mockups and see that what possibilities are there to make the, to give the uh, client a better user experience. Next we have prototype phase. Now prototype building is often done in parallel with the design phase. As design involves in designer's mind, they produce various kinds of prototype as external design representations. There are various kinds of prototypes such as horizontal, vertical, T and local. When I say horizontal prototype, it basically deals with more of features but less in terms of functionality. When I say vertical prototype as the name goes vertical, we deal much in depth in functionality but less in features. So as a diagram which you can see, in horizontal we have on x axis we have features, on y axis we have functionality. So, as I say horizontal, more of features and less of functionality. When I say vertical, in-depth functionality but less of features. Now, next we have is T prototype. Now, in T prototype, as it goes, we have horizontal as well as vertical. So, we have a proper proportionate of features as well as functionality. The last one comes as local prototype. In local prototype, if you see, it is the intersection part of horizontal as well as vertical. So, in local prototype, we have limited features as well as limited functionalities. So, when initially we start with the product or the designing part, it is always best to go with local where you try to uh, minimize the features and functionalities and test it as, as and when required. This is where your third phase of UX life cycle that is prototype. The last phase of UX life cycle is evaluation. Now in evaluation, we can have two different types of evaluation. Either we can have rapid evaluation or we can have rigorous evaluation. When I say rapid evaluation, it means that we are doing evaluation in a quick manner. So when our project is small and it does not deal with complex interactions and complex work domain, we can work with rigorous process. So rigorous gives us a better result. It is good in terms of cost. It is good in terms of uh, involving more people. So cost is always less, but we get a better kind of result. When I say rigorous method, rigorous is done to make sure that we meet all the goals in a minute way and to see every process in detail. So rigorous method is basically used when we have a complex system and we want to uh, test each and every functionality in detail. So rigorous method will be uh, involving more, uh, will have more cost involved, will have more people involved, but the result and the efficiency will be really good. On the other hand, rapid cost will be less, people will be involved less, but it will not, the result will not be as effective as rigorous. So when I say about the primary objective of over of life cycle is to keep on moving in the process and to uh, have a better kind of design and to make sure that user has the better user experience. So this is about the evaluation phase which is the last phase of UX life cycle where we have rapid evaluation, rigorous evaluation and in detail different types as well.
so when i say a life cycle a life cycle is more of a continuous stream of reusing and improving the designs the ideas and the product as well so we need to make sure that when we make and design our process of the project it can be an iterative process to make sure that the design is better and the user has better user experience so this was all about the ux life cycle thank you